Good evening, Mr. Rosas. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to infiltrate the Dean's office. Bypass security. Evade detection by any means necessary. Have you felt the and retrieve the secret data on the most securely encrypted, impossible to read format known to man. The code name is Burnt Orange, and this is The Hook. Good evening, UT, and good evening, the world. I'm your host, Andrew Rosas. If one thing's no secret, it's that we all have secrets. For most of us, keeping secrets is as simple as clearing our browser history, or the controversial practice of keeping our big mouth shut. But perhaps no one else in the free world is saddled with as many secrets and sensitive information as the President of the United States. Yes, the highest office in the land comes with enough stress and responsibility to turn your hair whiter than the crowd at a Utah Jazz basketball game. One of the ways the President is kept abreast of national intelligence is the President's Daily Brief, a document so few people have read, it might as well be your friend's screenplay. The bad guy means to get caught? Ugh. The President's Daily Brief is something an ordinary citizen could only dream about seeing. That is, until now. Recently, the CIA declassified around 2,500 briefs, spanning the years 1961 to 1969, and straddling JFK and LBJ's presidencies. To tell us more about this historic insight is Stephen Slick, director of UT's Intelligence Studies Project and clinical professor at the LBJ School of Public Affairs. Mr. Slick, this document is one of the most arcane pieces of intelligence in the entire world. So tell us, how is it actually prepared for the president? As you can imagine, our intelligence community collects information and follows a number of crises, and conflicts, and events going on around the globe. And a small number of those each day will rise to the level of presidential interest. So in part, the CIA and the intelligence community are selecting the things they think the president needs to know about that morning. Interesting. So, what can these documents tell us about the president's job? And how have these documents changed over the past 50 years? The presidential daily brief and the intelligence community's support to a president is very personal. It's to help the leader of the free world make important decisions. And each one of the, the individuals who's occupied that office has a different personality, a different level of background knowledge, a different style of learning and interacting with uh, the intelligence community. For example, some presidents have preferred to take an oral briefing from somebody from the intelligence community, sort of talk them through every day what they need to know. And it's very interactive. They ask questions and, and get answers to questions. Others are not interested uh, in that form of support. They would rather read something that's provided in writing in the morning and look at it at their leisure or look at it in the presence, presence of, their, of their national security advisor or some other counselor. So it's tailored to the specific needs of individual presidents. I have to ask, have these briefs always been a part of the president's day? It started out, it was quite a novel feature. For example, President Kennedy's predecessor uh, President Eisenhower did not receive regular uh, intelligence briefings from the CIA or anyone else. It was customary that they would have a weekly National Security Council meeting and the Director of Central Intelligence at the time would attend that meeting and provide a briefing uh, on the world situation that would sort of kick off the discussion. Mm -hmm. But President Kennedy, uh, through his aides, conveyed to CIA that he had different needs. He was more interested in foreign affairs, national security issues, and he thought he needed to be updated every day. If my knowledge of movies and TV served me, and it usually doesn't, secret information is usually kept on some sort of disc or thumb drive in some labyrinthine vault guarded by dogs and lasers and security doors, retinal scanners. Anyway, so why has this information been declassified and released to the public? This president has pledged uh, to, to lead the most transparent, open government uh, in modern history, and part of that, frankly, is unlocking some of the secrets from the intelligence community. And so 
I think in this event last month here, at, uh, here in Austin, and across a range of their activities, the CIA and the intelligence community are trying to be a little bit more open, a little bit more accessible to the American people. I, for one, am going to take a look at these unlocked briefs just as soon as I remember my Wi-Fi password. I urge you, if you're interested in UT's involvement in the intelligence community, to check out the Intelligence Studies Project and all the programs they have going on at their website in the description below. Also, if you enjoy this show and intelligence in quotations, subscribe to The Hook and like us on social media. As always, I'm Andrew Rosas reminding you to stay hooked.